Well, to finish this one, and I'm going to go on to a different theme altogether with the cityscapes of London. I've done all these different types of theme now. We've done woodland and light coming down through the trees, we've done the Scottish locks, we've done a sunrise, we've done the poppy fields and so on. I think it would be rather nice now to try something with some buildings in. And I think I'd like to do maybe four, maybe six or plus um, of the photographs that I took in London many years ago and have enhanced. And we'll try that with different techniques. Uh, as, as I'm exploring these mediums, and as I'm exploring the tools that I use in them, I'm going to now, uh, I've just ordered last night on eBay, some uh, icing syringes and so on, with different nozzles, because I'd like to actually start to explore being able to draw onto the buildings with the filler, a bit like icing. So I'm going to not only take the textures further with natural things, but also being able to draw out on the, the, the low relief with a syringe. So I'm going to explore and experiment further and I'm letting you share that with me and I hope you find that as interesting as I will doing it. So let's move on now to this, these London themes. So there's a picture we're going to use. I've already drawn it out in pastel onto the MDF. And uh, now I'm going to build up the sky and build up the, the surface of the, of the buildings. Right, there's our mix then of PVA glue and filler, smooth filler, a little bit of water and we'll just spread that by hand onto here and start to build up these lovely textures. I need to work into this again in a moment with um, a knife. This is just to apply the stuff basically and get the surface covered. I'm going to go around the building at the moment with this um, filler and take it right down and smooth it into here and then raise the building up afterwards above this because I want to be able to use some of my new tools that I'm going to try out shortly. I'm going to try some icing tools because isn't this stuff a bit like icing sugar? Right, now I'm going to use the knife to uh, manipulate and mould the clouds. You can see by just lifting the knife I'm able to make this lovely smooth areas and rough areas. There we are. Even now we're getting a feeling of, of space just with those textures on there. And smooth that down first of all. Well, I'm going to continue with this piece now, mix up some more of this filler and glue. I'm going to start off with uh, my spatula and palette knives to build up the edges of these main forms. Well, I'm going to try out this experiment with this new little tool here. I've got some more coming this way with ice and sugar decoration dispensers and see if we can actually build up some of this stonework um, and the textures with that as well. And these are the other various nozzles here. See what fun we can have with those. I think we should be able to do quite a lot with them actually. Right then, first of all I'm going to build up uh, the edges. I need to just plaster this on. Fortunately I can still see from the previous work what I'm doing. Also I've got to make sure it sticks to the board, which um, unless I wet the board first of all, it's just get it, get it to glue. I'm going to come back with a knife in a minute to, to smooth things out, but I just need to build up these upper layers first. You can see how the drawing is appearing. So I'll turn off the camera for the moment. As you can see how I'm just beginning to do this and I'll switch it on again at the next stage. Well I must actually admit that that was more difficult than I thought it was going to be and I haven't even got to the um, application with the uh, syringe yet. I'm just about to try that now. See what effects we can get. Uh, at the moment it's just been roughing out with my fingers and drawing with my fingers. 
which actually has almost done the effects. But let's see what we can get now with the syringe. Now, as I was saying, this is experimental, so I've no idea what's going to happen here. I'm just going to explore and try and find out as we go along. See if we can just start to draw in pieces across here. Give me some form of texture at least, isn't it? Which is quite nice. That's going to come downwards here. Quite right, of course, we can go back and adjust it with our fingers again. So I'm using it fairly quickly, it's coming out of the nozzle fairly quickly, not a problem. I don't know the details that I want, now's the time to be putting those in. Build up the um, towers and the, the tips of the towers a bit. Right, I've made quite a nice mixture there now, it's like a heavy cream. Put that inside the syringe. Let's see if we can now use this to make some slightly finer marks. Let's test it out first up here. Yes, we should be able to. Perhaps I can drag some of these finer. But perhaps, only perhaps, things out here. Quite useful. So the tool will work. Just got to work by its limitations. So yes, it's going to have its uses, but it's not the be and end all. I think the save if I start exploring with some different uh, nozzles and uh, make the mixture just a little bit thinner in future, it may work better. There we go. Texturing about done. Now I'm just going to come back with my knife a bit, which I haven't used yet, and just do a bit more texturing in places like this. Well here's the texturing now done then and we're going to paint it black ready to put up onto the uh, easel and start working the colours in. We now have the black painted onto it and I'm ready to move ahead with my um, actual colouring of the, of the scene. One two little spots here I need to touch up but otherwise it's all right. What I'm also going to do into this picture, because I've had trouble signing, I'm going to use my signet ring here, which I'll just show you when it's printed into a material. I used to use it for clay to, to sign my pots. It, of course, brings the signature up in reverse. So um, I'm able to use this into, say, sealing wax. So I'm going to experiment with these pictures, these textural ones, with sealing wax, and put sealing wax onto the paintings themselves uh, in an area like that where I'd normally sign, and then I should print my ring into that sealing wax to give the signature for these low relief paintings. And one of the problems being that they're so textural that I can't find anywhere to actually paint a signature. Okay, the uh, board is set up and my paints I've set up here in a couple of sandwich boxes and my roller and a tray ready with some brushes as well. So I'm going to mix up with the roller first and work on the sky. And I'm going to start with a nice mid-grey. I'm going to put these lighter colours on in a minute. I'm going to be quite expressive with my um, sponge roller. So the mid-grey, let's see, using a nice big filbert brush to mix with. A little bit of water first of all just to get things moving. Start with your white when you're making a lighter colour. Always start with the white. Uh, don't start with the colour and then the work and end up with gallons of it. I want a little bit of mauve into this. It must be slightly warmer. I tend to work with my lighter colours first and then gradually add to them. I find that way I can um, say it's washing up everything. Now I want to work through the background clouds here. I can always come back over these towers later, no worry about that. It's slightly purple mauve colour coming down through. It's a bit light and make it a bit darker in a moment. We will light colours over the top later, so I'm not going to worry too much about being able to go over things. 
right down through into between these cracks and crevices here a bit. And then go over the tops of these tower, tower tips again later. So the light in between, might as well get in here with a brush later. Just colour down a, a tone, I'm going to add a little bit more blue to it. Right, now I've got some yellow ochre in my palette, I can carry on. I'll take a little bit of that yellow ochre into that similar colour. And just make it a little bit greener. You know, we'll build them up and build them up. This is one of the lovely things about the rollers, is we can build up, gradually blend with the roller, as one well with a paintbrush. And it's going to be darker still in a moment. I'll make an even deeper version of this blue-grey. Right up through there. Right here in a moment, but I then might have to use a brush into there. Right, now for my turquoise, I'm going to add a lot more yellow. So I've got a bit of the turquoise here. I'm going to actually add quite a bit more yellow to it. And I'm going to bring some cerulean blue in at this moment. Let's just test this colour out. Get it right. That's not far out actually. Lovely texture going on. Mix some more of it up. I'm going to use a bit of cerulean blue later with this. Lovely bright bit of sky coming through there. So a bit stronger. A bit stronger as a blue in a, in a way. Come down here. Really get some of these colours. And we're going stronger with these blue greens still. And I'm going to take a wee bit of cerulean and add that in just to start to get some of the deeper blues working here and there. Get the feeling of these blues. So the turquoise is now made to look more, more turquoise. Through there, and through here with this move, it comes all the way along here, comes down, especially across here. A bit redder perhaps, a bit pinker, we're going to add a bit of pink to this in a moment. Come back to these purples in just a moment. Now, talking about pinks, a bit of white to that. And we'll take a bit of some very bright pink to add into it. There we go, that's a nice up and through here. Right through there and down. We can almost glaze one colour over another using this technique. Some weird colours one would never think of mixing um, ordinarily. So it's good to play with colours like this because you get new ideas that will be used in landscape and so on later again as well. Right, now I want to go for much, much lighter. So I'm going to take some pure white and add that to that. And we'll start to work the roller into that. And as our final colour, go a bit lighter yet, but we'll start to bring these lovely white areas of cloud right down through here, quite expressively, right up to here. So more white into that still. Same colour, but just with a tint of the underpainting that we've already done. So white with this other colour just glowing through. Coming down here the same, you can come up and through into here. Bits of cloud. Getting stronger and stronger as I work the layers over. Right, let's go for those deeper purples we were talking about. Okay, then a lovely deep blue purple to go on down here. Really pick some colour out now, right down to it. Give you a little bit of it just tickling in some of the colours just on the surfaces. This is where we can pick up on the textures. There we go, we'll leave it at that for a minute and let's come down to now working on our um, deeper colours down here. And I really want to get in there with the brush first before going onto the roller. Right now, what I want to do is start working in these very deep colours up here into the roofs and chimneys. I'm going to come in here, the brush, really hit these. 
into the background so that I can work my other colours over the top. Because I'm going to be working lighter warms over the top of these blues and letting them glow through, which is how Monet would have done it. Um, he would have been working with one colour over another to give the effect of broken colours. Get this wonderful glow going on here then. All of this dark is going to have a coating of very deep purple and blue into it. And these various blues that I'm going to put on here. Right through to Lee in a moment as we lightly dark. It's going to sink. It's going to sink on me a bit so I'm going to have to put in lighter and lighter blues as well. Nothing to stop us going back at any time to paint another part of the picture. If we decide that another part needs some work on it, I can go back and I can add into that here. This purple overall is uh, a lovely colour, but it's a beautiful blue mauve going on right throughout all of this stuff. I like this texture of colour we can get by using pure colour, which is what Monet enjoyed so much. And already this thing starts to come alive and vibrate for us. The colours here is a a bit of fun. Because they are here, little sparkles of light. So satisfying. It takes a bit of time to build everything up, yes, but it's so worth it. Just flicking the colours in, in the right places is not quite as easy as it sounds, but you'll soon get the hang of it. The blues again. I've only deep purples and blues and we'll I need some of these wonderful colours shining through here in the background. Colour foreground. These tools are going to glow through the warm coats and then put over the surface shine. We're almost ready to start doing these lovely warm colours. Just more highlighting of blues here and there just to bring the different blues out. Right, I think I'm ready to clean the palette and start into the warm colours. Before I do the warm colours, I'm just going to come in between some of these towers and flick in a few of the lights to get into the roller. Just for a bit more detail there. Okay, now we continue this fun bit. And I'm going to go back to the rollers again and start on the, the deep browns. Take some um, and reds. I'm going to take some burnt sienna straight away. So, plenty of about sienna. Take my roller, work it again into the brush as well as onto the palette. And let's see what effects we can get now with these warms coming across here. Really bring it out, I've got a feeling. Yeah, here we go. Just letting it come across the surfaces, letting the purples glow where I want them to. I'm going to be warm in a minute still. I'm going to come back with some. Yeah, a bit yellower because and some gold and even some oranges in places. So we've almost got our painting there in a few strokes. Just need to look at where the warmth might come into other spots too, like along here. Start to work up towards our oranges now and really get some sunlight happening. Alright, let's go to a nice bright yellow now. Oh, I want some deeper reds. I'm going to take some my deep orange and the red to really push the reds against the blues and the purples in the background there the oranges. I'm just going to take my brush now and rather than use the roller I'm going to use the, the brush so I can get cleaner colour just to pick out things like the lamps. I don't want to put the lights into the lamps that would be a bit too commercial just, just highlight them a fraction
well, I thought I had this one finished, but uh, not so. Because the thing, this, this paint sinks so badly, especially with acrylics, not so much with oils, but the colours have sunk right back. So I'm happy enough with the sky, but now I want to bring out these warm colours in the foreground here and just double check on the blues. I know that if I use the resin, it will come out again a bit anyway, but I really want to brighten this up again. So I'm going to hit the oranges and reds again on this. I'm probably only going to use the brush this time. So I'll work up, first of all, these lovely golden browns that we were doing. So I'll take some burnt sienna and the yellow ochre. I just want to come down and really hit some of these lovely warm reds amongst the purples. Because they've sunk completely. Just disappeared on me. And I want to bring some of these... Um, pinks and magentas back again as well and right up into here a lot warmer so when you think you're finished sometimes you haven't across there coming down here and that's livening things up a bit isn't it my reds and I put them to there are completely gone so let's come back with those reds which we were really hitting here. I'm going to go right back down to my Elizabeth Crimson as well. And we'll bring some of these crimsons back into here. Because all of these colours have just vanished. Difference that's done. You don't always realise when you're painting one of these that this is happening. That's the problem. You think something isn't quite right, something isn't quite the same. But you don't realise just why. Rescued it back again, I hope. I know, as I say, when I put the plastic coating on, it's going to come back a bit, but even so, it had just sunk too much. Funnily enough, the stuff is sinking back already. Whether it's going to stay light enough, it's hard to say. Uh -huh.